Kelly here and I am back with another video for W plus 9. Today I'm going to be doing some uh, watercoloring with the beautiful Bouquets Dahlia. I wanted to heat emboss it so I'm using my embossing buddy on um, Canson watercolor paper and I'm going to use my Misty to make sure that I get a good impression. So I'm using Versamark. Oh, this is the Misty Mini by the way um, which is like cute and adorable and I love it. So inking up with a Versamark, stamping it down on my watercolor paper, and then I'm going to go ahead and heat emboss that in white. Um, several, I've seen several people do this, the watercoloring in white, and um, yeah, it's just, it's such a like classic look and makes watercoloring so easy, and I love it so much. <laughs> so I'm going to uh, go ahead and heat set that, and once that's all melted, I'm going to let it cool off. And then today I'm going to be using Distress Inks to do my watercoloring. I'm using Seedless Preserves, uh, Fossilized Amber, Mowed Lawn, and then uh, Lucky Clover. And Dawn actually um, is the one who first got me interested in using two different colors of greens for my bouquets. She does it all the time and it looks spectacular. So I've kind of gotten in, the, I've adopted her habits. Um, how I prefer to do this, I'm working first of all with a number two round brush. And I do um, what they call the wet on wet technique. That's what works best for me. So I take clean, clear water and I wet the area that I want to add color to. And then I pick up my ink. Um, I'm using a Ranger Craft mat so I can just smush it right on there and it'll clean up super easy. And then so I can just pick it up and drop it in there. And then, of course, in between um, laying down clean, clear water, I'm, I'm cleaning my brush because... If you just pick up the pigment, like if I had done the little um, buds and then not cleaned off my brush and just gone to the next set of flowers, you would see the yellow and I would just be painting it a solid yellow. One of the things that I love about watercolor is the natural fade that you get with it. Um, by just putting down clean, clear water and adding pigment to just one end, it lets the water do the work and it... Um, the spread that you get is is beautiful and I don't think there's really a good way to um, kind of mimic that with your own brush strokes or maybe there is for other people but there <laughs> but I'm not one of them so um, I prefer to do it this way if you want your image to be a solid color then by all means you can just pick up your pigment and paint with it and it will be I like when there's a natural blend now you'll see that Things kind of get a little bit brighter. You'll have to excuse me as having a little bit of a lighting problem. Um, so I had to take a quick break and address that. I know with the white on white embossing, it makes it very difficult to see the image. Um, so I'm trying to get them, like trying to get the outer areas filled in before I went to work on the dahlia. And then obviously the more that we paint, the easier it'll be to see. So just kind of hang with me. So my approach is always the same way. I lay down the clean, clear water, and then I add pigment to where I want it to be the darkest, and I let the water carry the pigment out. Um, with watercolor, you usually do not want to work next to two areas that are wet because they will blend into each other, and they will um, obliterate any sort of lines or um, separation that you have between them. So you work in areas that are... Um, not next to each other. With the white embossing, you can kind of get away with it a little bit more. Um, not if it's like completely soaking wet, then they'll still bleed together because the water is beaded up. But if it's just damp, you can kind of get away with it um, and it won't bleed because the embossing kind of holds the water in that one area. It acts like a little lip to keep it inside. So you'll see that I'm doing the same thing. I'm laying down my clean, clear water. I'm adding the pigment. But one of the things that I love to do is go back, and you'll see me here doing it with the um, fossilized amber, is go back and add, while it's still damp, add in more pigment. And this is just how you can get really, really good shading by only using one color. Now, my fossilized amber was already pretty dry, and I didn't realize that when I put the pigment down. Since I didn't want the harsh edge, I took a damp brush and then went in from um, the dry end towards the pigment so that way it would kind of pull out and in this top flower here that I'm doing now it wasn't um, the pigment didn't go out as far as I wanted it to so I was adding that clean clear water into the pigment to get it to bloom out a little bit more 
but I really love going back in and adding that continually adding that same shade so that it gets really deep and rich and you get really good shading. That's how I achieve it with just using one color. Now you could do um, your like your base coat of the color and then just like any other um, colored pencils, any other medium, colored pencils, Copics, um, if you wanted to get shading, you could also do that with uh, your grays or um, the opposite color of the color wheel. So, that, I mean, that's just something that that's kind of an option. Um, the opposite color of the, of the color wheel, I would not shade with um, while it was wet. I would do that by building layers. So you can see here, I've kind of sped it up. Um, the video was really long, and it's still kind of long, uh, just because this is such an in intricate design uh, stamp. And it's totally beautiful, and I really wanted to watercolor it, but I think in a real life time, it took me about an hour and a half. So I managed to get the video down to about 15 minutes, but I could not accomplish that without speeding it up. Um, it is the same exact technique that I've been doing the entire time that you were watching in regular time. This is just, you know, so we don't have to sit here all day and you can go about living your life, which I'm sure that you would like to do. Um, but watercoloring is just one of those things that's like super relaxing. You can just, you know, after a long day and you just want to chill and color and make something pretty. Um, this is definitely one of the ways that I like to do that because it's kind of the same motion. You can get lost in thought. Um, so I really, really enjoy this image. Surprisingly, seeing as how Copics are my favorite medium, not actually colored this image with Copics yet. So um, look for that in the future because I definitely have to. I um, begged Dawn for quite some time for some beautiful outline flowers, and she definitely delivered. This Dahlia is the second one she's released in the Beautiful Bouquets series. The first one was the Ranunculus, which was stunning. Um, and then there's this one, and then there may be more in the future. I'm just saying there could be, if you were interested in those, just so you know. Um, so just continually doing the same thing, laying down that clean, clear water. And I will be honest, toward the end, I did get a little impatient. It's hard to continue, and you can see um, them starting to work in some areas that are still wet next to each other. It's just as you proceed and there's less and less petals to color, um, the ones that are usually left are the ones that are usually right next to each other because you can only do so much. And um, so I did kind of cheat and just try to be really careful. Um, another thing that I did besides just adding shading, uh, the dahlia flowers, um, the petals kind of curl in on each other and that's exactly how Dawn drew them because that's how they exist in real life. So I did add some more pigment in some of the areas where it would be turned over. Not all of them, but in some of them. And this is just, you know, it's a good way to break up the flower, get a little more depth of color, help it to not appear um, so flat. So, um, you know, that's something that you can try, but you don't by no means have to do that. I mean, it's still, even if you just do clean, clear water, add pigment, and... Um, let it go. It's going to be beautiful because watercoloring is just that. When you when you let go of the control and you let the water do the work, um, it's stunning. This particular technique using the white embossing is a way to kind of keep a little bit of control uh, with your watercoloring. And that's something that I struggle with just because I am a clean and simple artist. I like clean lines. Now, I look at um, other people's watercolors, and I'm like, you know, that's absolutely beautiful, and, and they were very free with it, and, um, like, I try to talk myself into doing that, but sometimes I don't want to have to stress that much about it. So this, um, this technique kind of saves me from having to do that. So back to the um, color choices. I usually, you saw me put down the four colors here. I picked my colors based on... Um, complementary colors, what was going to work well. So you have your primary colors, secondary colors, tertiary colors when you're looking at the color wheel. And purple and yellow are across from each other, which makes them complementary colors. Anything that's across from each other is going to be complementary. So usually you can get a fairly good color combination if you take 
two complementary colors and then use one color that's to the left or right of one of them. So for example, I chose purple and yellow complementary and then I went one to the left of the yellow for the green with the leaves. Now, there that's not like a hard and fast rule. That's just like a really good basic starting from. But I also added in some blue, which is, you know, one to the left or right of the purple. Um, I try to be careful about how many colors I add into my bouquets because I don't want it to be crazy. I still want it to be readable. Uh, but there, like I said, there are no hard and, and fast rules here. They're just suggestions that if you're beginning and still kind of finding your footing in what will look good together, um, that those are some suggestions that you can start with. So like I said before, um, Dawn, watching her color or watching her watercolor, um, I had learned you know, that she usually did a green, um, and she has a tendency to lean more toward like an olivey green for her petals, um, and then she usually does a blue base. And they look beautiful together, and um, so I wanted them to still be bright, because I knew the main focus my Dahlia was going to be that um, deep pinkish purple, um, color and I didn't want it to feel like a fall card because it's May and it's spring um, and I'm not ready for fall like I'm so ready for summer though it snowed here today for real snow in the middle of May it's like Ohio didn't get the memo that it's spring but anyway um, so I wanted to add in um, those those two different colors but I wanted mine to be a little bit brighter because I wanted it to feel summery so that's why I chose the mowed lawn, which is my um, my favorite green, and then I chose the lucky clover, which is still very bright, um, but is more on the blue side. Not as blue as say like peacock feathers, um, but it does have more of a blue base in it. So I just used a little bit of that for the um, I'm calling them buttercups, but I don't know if they're actually buttercups or not um, for the little teeny tiny flowers, uh, the little yellow flowers. Uh, that are kind of like accents built into um, the bouquet, and then I use them for the. You know, they almost look like tiny ferns. Um, I don't really know how you would describe the long, lanky leaves with the real thin um, leaves on them. So I use the um, the lucky clover for that as well, and just you know to try to like break up the design a little bit. Don't mind my head there. <laughs> um, because it is hard for you to see the white on white embossing. Sometimes it was hard for me to see it too. And because um, I'm very blessed um, and do, you know, the design work uh, for W plus nine, the set that I have doesn't have the black outline on it, which is normally what I look at. I should have in hindsight stamped it in black first. So I would have that as a guide to look at, but I didn't think about it. So I wanted to give this a little bit of a background um, to really make that white embossing pop. So I'm using clean, clear water, and I'm going around the um, image, like the white outline embossing. And that was taking just like a, it was drying up on me too fast. So I, I picked a fatter brush. This is like a number six. And then I'm just kind of going around the whole image. Now I'm not getting anywhere close to that white line. I'm just laying down clean, clear water. And then I can go back in with the smaller brush, the number two, and kind of drag that in to around my images. This still, even doing that, even laying down all that water, it was still drying quicker than I was ready for. So I tried my best to get as much water down as I could. And then I went in and added um, the salty ocean. Now sometimes there was some distress ink that was built up on top of the... Uh, white embossing and so then I would pick up that color but you can just blot it up with a paper towel and go in and add more clean clear water and you wouldn't even know that it was there so I'm just kind of moving I yeah, I mean it's obviously sped up but I, I'm moving pretty quickly nonetheless because I want to make sure that the water isn't going to dry on me and it's going to spread out and give me a smooth transition into that background one of the other things that will help with that is kind of like blotting up your edges with um, a dry cloth and that just softens it out so there aren't really any hard edges. If you're a fan of light and hard edges and what I'm 
I don't want to say freehand coloring or freehand watercoloring because I don't do that. But when I'm watercoloring with um, no line, there we go, no line coloring, um, I try to uh, not do that. I like the hard and soft edges. But on this, I just wanted it all to be soft. So I've cut some craft foam. Um, we're back to just regular time. Um, and I had, after that was all dry, I put it underneath the book for a while to get rid of um, the majority of the warping. This is coal mine uh, paper from W plus nine. I'm using this as my card front. So I have a I have a white card base, and then I just cut a panel of this to put on top, um, so I could still write white on the inside. But then when I was looking at the card on a whole, it looked kind of boxy. So I ended up cutting down that card base to four and leaving my watercolor panel at four and a quarter. So it'll still fit inside an envelope, but it kind of hangs over. I wanted to add just a little bit of sparkle, something on the front. I had originally intended on putting a sentiment on there that was sending birthday wishes. Um, I just didn't like it. I didn't like it. I tried a couple of different things, and all of it covered up way too much of that watercoloring, which I was really in love with. So I just decided that I wasn't going to put a sentiment on it. Um, I'm sure I'm not the only card maker who's ever run into that problem. So once I got the um, glitter strips down, I'm just going to trim off the edges. And then I'm going to adhere the stamped panel to the card base. And I'm, I was happy with the way it looked. So I figured I would just hold it kind of in card limbo uh, until I had something that I needed it for. You know, this would be good for happy birthday, but it would be good for get well, thinking of you, any of those things. I mean, really, florals are just um, just classic and they go with everything. So I'm using some clear Wink of Stella just on the base of the petals just to give it a little bit of shimmer, uh, kind of pick up that glitter that I used, and that's the whole card. So thank you so much for joining me, and I will catch you guys in the next video. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.